of all patients in the first study that we now are in the Sahara. So, observing the international debate around PKU, do you think there are new insights, new horizons? Uh, yes, there are um, new horizons. Um, one of the issues is that we are used to um, relate all we do to the blood V concentration, Fnellen concentration, and more and more there are coming uh, information uh, that, that it's very important, but there's more. Um, and that the blood vanillin concentration does not explain the whole outcome in our patients. But having said that, we at this moment do not know what should be measured more except from vanillin uh, to have an idea, to have a better idea, I have to say, um, what is the real explanation and how patients behave and how patients will develop, etc. Yeah. So what kind of new alternatives are coming into your mind? Um, there are a few coming to my mind. There are some publications in which they have some urine measurements of uh, some um, neurotransmitter-related substances, substances. And there is also in blood some measures of other amino acids, which you can put a ratio to phenylalanine, which may have, um, may prove in later time that that is the good thing to do. Okay, and are you talking about um, um, treatment issues or even cure uh, issues? No, no, no. This is all about how to rate, uh, relate the outcome to something biochemical and which you can monitor. Now you say the blood V concentration should be below 360 and then the outcome will be good. But now we start to know that that is not the whole answer. So maybe in the future with your patients you say, okay, we have to, to measure blood V concentration, but also to do some other measurements in blood and maybe some other measurements in urine to have the complete biochemical picture. And when that's uh, very well done, and that gives good results, the outcome is more optimal. That's the idea. It's not about treatment, it's about monitoring. Okay, that comes before treatment. <clears throat> sure, when, when the diet would be uh, completely adequate, we would not think of other treatment strategies. We have to think of other treatment strategies for two reasons. First of all, our outcome is still not optimal in all patients and we think we understand why but we are not completely sure. That's why we may need other instruments, other monitoring instruments in blood and in urine. And the other thing is that knowing that diet is so difficult to continue, especially later in life, starting after some 10 years of age, you want to have um, a more easy uh, treatment possibility. And of course, we already have Kuvan uh, tetrahydrobiopterin, but Kuvan is only um, treating, helping some 20 to 40 percent of our patients, not more. Okay, still, uh, uh, there are developments with uh, alternatives to Kuvan. Mm -hmm. That are hopeful? Uh, they are hopeful. Um, PEC failiase, an, an enzyme which, um, which breaks down the phenylalanine, um, which now has to be taken by uh, skin uh, or, or, or needles just under the skin, um, is hopeful, but still not there. Um, but might be that in future there are other strategies possible. How about PEC, Paul? That's PEC failures. I was thinking already. So. It was first called PEC, then was it PEC, Paul, now it's called PEC failures. So what's the principle behind it? It breaks down, uh, PEC failures breaks down uh, phenylalanine to, not to tyrosine, but to a totally different substance. Um, and that way you have no phenylalanine anymore. Um, it is um, nothing to do with the liver. It has nothing to do with the normal phenylalanine metabolism. 
So it's completely taking its own control. When you give more pack failures, the phenylalanine will be lower. When you le give less pack failures, the fee concentration will be higher. And an issue is that m many patients, as far as we know from there are only stories uh, from the United States, only one publication. Um, what we know is there are some um, reactions uh, to giving uh, the pec failures through the skin. Sometimes uh, skin reactions at that place, sometimes a little bit more general reactions. And of course, any, everyone is a little bit afraid about the general reactions. Okay, but in general, can you say that uh, developments around uh, pec pal are hopeful? Yes, I think they are hopeful, uh, but still uh, the, the story is already going on for years and now it should arrive somewhere. Okay. We had a very interesting uh, discussion this morning, as far as I can say that, about GMP. Is it the future? It's part of the future. There will be, I think, where we now are in the, in the era uh, of diet or BH4 or a combination, we will see in the future many more different treatment strategies and you can choose and, and uh, discuss with your patient what is the best for them. So you really go to personalized medicine. Yeah. Are there any other major developments that you can talk about? Um, there are other um, chaperons being um, in, in line to, to, to discovery or discovered and in line to coming to the field. And Kuvan is a chaperon that folds the enzyme um, or helps to fold the enzyme. And there may be chaperons which are stronger, which will help patients better and even more patients better. That's one. Of course, anyone is uh, discussing gene therapy that, that might help our patients in the future. Um, I've heard that 30 years before, that uh, it will come in some five years, and now we are 30 years further, so maybe it will take some time. But at the end, um, it will be cured by gene therapy. I'm pretty sure of that. You mean the disease might yes. in the end be cured by gene, by gene therapy. therapy? But even that, when you say cured by gene therapy, we do not have to believe that you give once gene therapy and then it's finished you may have to repeat it you may have to adjust some things uh, it's more complex than just giving a pill or an injection or something else and then cured but in the definition that you um, um, exchange the ph activity for which is very low in the patient's uh, own mutations and exchange it by something which helps really, it's true, it can be cured. So like in the sphere of diabetes type 1, there's talking about curing it. The same hopeful perspective is there in the field of PKU. For many other diseases, gene therapy at, in some time, it will be uh, the positive uh, medal of, of the, the, it will be the possible future. Of course, you don't want to give uh, patients and their family too much hope, but how would you, let's say, um, make this perspective explicit to a person, a daddy or a mother, yeah, or yeah, a patient yeah. yourself? I see your, uh, your eyes coming up. <laughs> um, we don't know. We don't know how long it takes. But there are diseases in which gene therapy is already going to the market, really going to the market. Um, that means that other diseases will follow when the first disease appears to be safe, appears to be efficient, appears to give no other problems and it's financially possible. Of course, <clears throat> PQ is not the first disease to be cured by gene therapy. It's a rare disease. Um, it's treatable by other means. Uh, but when other problems have been solved in other diseases, it will follow. Thank you so much.